Right guys, what is up and welcome back to some more Veloce Esports Squad Sprint here today and we are here for the penultimate race of the season for the Hungarian Grand Prix. If you guys missed the last episode at Baku in Azerbaijan, it is on screen right now and it will be linked in the top right hand corner of your screen guys. So go check out the race if you haven't seen it already. It was carnage as it always is around Baku and it gets very very tasty because of course we at the minute are engraved and trying to chase down Ben, you know, Tim Roddick, we're in a battle with him to try and be the best content creator. And uh, we still have a chance mathematically, even though the chance is slim, it is still possible. But today we need a big, big result to try and get him. And also worth noting, today is a first match point for Danny Berezne in the Drivers' Championship. Looking to hopefully go back-to-back -back on World Championships. But first of all, Ryan Littlemore starts from P1. Thibaut Courtois alongside him on the front row. It's Niran FNG in third place with Veloce Isaac in fourth. Arava TV P5 with a turno alongside him on row 3. Then it's Karki in 7th. Hayden Gullis in 8th place in the second racing pointless car. And then my teammate Raggy has Veloce Storm alongside him to round up row number 5. We then move on to row 6 and it's Alex Gill on P11. We are starting from P12. Behind me is my rival Benjamin Daly, Timot Marduk in 13th with Simon Vargang alongside him. Then we have Veloce James in 15th with Hypers alongside him. And at the back of the grid, it's Danny Berezne and of course the man who's favourite to win the championship here today in what is also his home race so he's going to be wanting to try and pull that out the bag but uh, here we are then at the Magyar Nationalist Grand Prix as uh, so many people like to call it of course uh, the old joke from uh, x -Mate G back in the day but here we go then getting underway for the start of the Grand Prix just finishing up on the formation lap we are going to start the race today on these soft compound tyres uh, we're going to box around lap three to five depending on strategy um, there, there could also be VSCs or safety cars so you never know around here or there could be crashes either way here we go getting ready for the five red lights at Budapest and we are away for round 11 and the penultimate race of the season as we get a pretty okay start Reggie gets off to a flyer Ben as well in the Ferrari off to a fantastic start as we lose the place off the line down towards the first corner going through the middle here trying to avoid contact if possible as the Williams there goes a bit laggy and uh, Danny Berezny I believe on the inside they're in the Alfa Romeo making a move as does Hypers and we are down to PE15 now as we get a warning as we go 3-1 there's contact between myself and Hayden and it's very very close but we just about get the move done on the racing point drive but we get forced out wide by Hypers and then the Williams crashes off Karki there just in front of us as we move up to P13 and now Hypers going for a move on a turno in the second racing point cars it's been contact Raggy's gone for a spin and somehow we're going to avoid all these cars slip our way through and make our way up into ninth place somehow we didn't crash there and I don't know how the hell that happened but we somehow survived and we're P9 and we are once again behind Ben who is in front of us and unfortunately that is very very annoying for the championship as Ben just gets away from us and now on lap 2 he's making a move on Arif who's not really putting up a fight of course as they are teammates and at this point I was like oh no I'm going to have to you know pass Arif I've had very um, rocky relationships with Arif when it comes to squad sprint he's a very good defensive driver so it's hard to pass him um, so I'm going to find it quite tricky, especially around this track where overtaking is so difficult. So we're going to have to try and pull something out of the bag here. But Ben has been let go by his teammate and I'm trying to hunt him down. So I was trying to get on it here and try and step up the pace to get with Ben as there's contact in front. And Arif catches the curb. He goes for a spin and we've lost our wing again. We go for a half spin and we have to wait for everybody to go by. And at this point, if you look at my bottom left mirror, Joe Eterno goes flying. I don't know what the hell happened. He retired from the race. Apparently, he says he hit my car. Yeah, I didn't get one bit of contact. So, some kind of lag incident there as Joe took off and lost his suspension in the process. So, we're currently in P11, but of course, we do have wing damage. So, we are going to have to pit. The safety car has been deployed in amongst all this chaos, and Arab is going to follow me into the pit lane. But once again, it seems to happen all the time to us. We keep collecting a car that spins in front of us every single time. There's always a car that happens to spin and I'm the first car to drive by that incident and somehow I can't seem to avoid it and we always get collected and pick up damage. So it's very unfortunate for us. As uh, you can see, we're now on fresh medium tyres going to the end of the race probably. It's going to be marginal, you know. Um, the mediums, you can't do a full race on these. You can't pick lap one for the mediums and go to the finish. It's quite difficult, so... The safety car will help in terms of making it to the end, but it's not going to be the easiest strategy to achieve. Either way, we're now down to P15 and in penultimate place. And then, unfortunately, we caught up to the train and suddenly I got brake checked uh, and I lost my wing again. So, 
yeah, I hit the back of Storm, got a brake check, and for good measure, we get a five-second penalty. So what we're going to do is we're going to pit again this lap, uh, put on fresh tyres again, because we do have another set as we almost hit the back of Storm again there. Another brake check from all the AI cars. The safety car is still scheduled to stay out for another lap, so it's not going to affect us too badly. So we are going to pit in for another set of medium tyres and get our wing fixed and also serve the five-second time penalties. Hopefully, we can get that out of the way and it won't affect us at the end of the race. So here we go, into the pit lane in what has been a very, very messy last two and a half laps. And my team are not even ready for me. As you can see, they're currently still trying to get the front wing ready and you know on the car. So at the minute, serving the penalty here, waiting for things to tick over as car key goes by. So we're now down to P16, rock bottom and last. So it's been a disaster, really. And not what I'd hoped for in this race. You know, at one point we was P9, we survived the crash on lap one. And I was trying to hunt down Ben and suddenly our spins and it all goes wrong. And my bad luck has returned. I've had a couple of good races lately, but we're back to bad luck once again. So here we are, fresh, medium tyres, going to the finish. As we already know now, we're going to try and get this to the end. It does mean the lap the tyres are one lap fresher, which is a small positive, I guess. And we've got Karki here lagging us. We're going to get ready for the restart. It looks like Karki disconnected from the session, and he's not actually driving his car. And this is losing us time because we're dropping back from the cars in front here, as I can't overtake the ghost. So I'm waiting for this restart. But look how much time we're losing here, waiting for this restart to happen. And it's costing us so much as we now go green flag, and we can pass. And there we go, we get past Karki, who of course is not driving, it's a ghost. And we move up to P14 as Arav actually pits in the Ferrari. So Arav serving a pit stop there for some reason. He may have got a penalty, who knows. So we're now up to 14th place. Meanwhile, we've got Raggy battling without his skill on as Alex made his way past. And now Raggy makes a bit of a mistake here, runs it in a bit hot. And he gives me the wave through to let me go by as we make a move there. And we progress up into 13th place. So straight away, within a lap, making up three places from 16th to 13th and making light work of the opposition here. There are a couple of cars on hard tyres as well. So... We're going to see what happens as now Alex Gillon goes for a move on Veloce Isaac. Around the outside he goes as we run it a bit wide there. We're going to try and get the switch back through this section as Alex does make the move stick. Flat out through here just about keeping it within track limits. And uh, we're now all over the back of this Williams looking for a move over the fast left. And uh, just trying to put the pressure on really. Isaac of course, like I mentioned before, on hard tyres. There's this contact in front. Some debris has come off one of the cars. Not sure who it was. Alex Gillon gets off pretty poorly out of there. We're going to have a look on the inside but... Quite tricky to make the move. Alex is uh, quite a tough driver to beat. So we're going to back off for now. Be patient. As now these both of these guys get caught up. We go around the outside of Alex Gillon through here as he gets tucked up behind Isaac. And we're going to make a beautiful move. And Isaac gets loose on the exit. So we make a two-for-one overtake and move up to P11. And we are just walking past cars at the minute, using the medium tyres to make the moves. And we move up to 11th place and really putting in the work here to make, get, make a lot of work with these guys and get ahead and get ourselves back into the point. So really good stuff so far as we make our way towards the end of lap six. We're now behind Veloce Storm, another driver on the hard compound tyre. So we're going to get that benefit of that grip on these mediums. And to be fair, we had a great exit at the final corner using full engine power here. And the storm is brewing as we make our way into turn one. DRS now enabled, but we're going to absolutely lick the stamp and send it down the inside of turn one. Storm tries to turn in to stop us from making the move, but we take the inside line. A little bit of contact, but it is what it is. We have to make these moves count. And use the fresh tyres to make light work of these guys. And there we go. Job done. We're now behind Hayden Gullis, who's behind FNG on Niren. So... Uh, Niren, of course, a FIFA player on the pad, so he's not the fastest, and he's holding up Hayden, and Hayden is now holding me up. So there's a bit of a train and a bit of a kerfuffle here, so we need to try and get past both of these guys very quickly, and that way we can get some clean air and try and chase down the car in front. As you can see, just checking our tyres there, making sure everything's good. I thought about going down the inside of Hayden through the chicane there, but we backed off as everyone takes a very interesting run through there. Everyone was cutting that corner all race long. I was trying to keep it on the track at all times. But here we go. Hayden looking for the move on Niren. Niren all over the place here. I believe he's also on the hard tyres, so he's struggling for grip. And Hayden goes for the move. There's a bit of contact, I think, and we get a great exit here. And we're going to slide down the inside of the racing point, and we're going to make a nice, easy move there. And Hayden tries to fight it a little bit, but in the end, it's no use. And we're now tucked in behind Niren, who is on that hard compound tyre. So we're going to try and also make mincemeat of him as we make our way into the final corner here, just waiting for the DRS, taking it nice and easy. Niren understeering wide on those tyres, and we now pick up the DRS, and there we go, up to eighth place. And suddenly, we've gone from 16th to 8th in about three laps so great progress from us and we've now got CRG Simon or Simon Weigang of course S1, F1 Esports driver in front of us and I believe it's Thibaut Courtois in front of him and uh, cutting on to lap 9 you can see personal best setting good pace here on these tyres and to be fair the mediums were staying with me Simon in front of us does have the hard tyres on 
and I believe he may have wing damage, I believe. I'm not 100% sure. Um, I don't think it's too bad if it is, because on the broadcast, you couldn't see it that much. Um, well, I couldn't see any of it, to be fair. He said he may have had damage. Either way, uh, Thibaut Courtois let someone go by, and we're going to have to try and navigate the Real Madrid goalkeeper in what was one of my best moves of the race, I've got to say. Down to turn one, similar move to Storm, but we are a little bit further back. We are going to go for it, though, on the breaks. Fair play to Thibaut Courtois. He sees me, you know, coming on the breaks, and he's going to go for the switchback, but luckily for us, we had the DRS, and we're going to just about stay in front of him, but nice switchback move there from Thibaut, but we make the move, and we move into P7 in this Grand Prix, and we can now begin chase after CRG Simon and in front of him it is Tiamat Marduk in the Ferrari you can see the red little dot in the distance so I'm trying to hunt these guys down as we are currently P7 in this race I can see Ben there into turn one and I believe he's in the hard tires as well and he was actually slowing down at every single lap so we was catching him and I was pushing so so much you can see the lap times in the top right very consistent lap after lap after lap just trying to pump in those good laps and we was doing low 19s every single lap and it was really really good from us and eventually we got into the DRS range of Simon Viagang we now come to lap 14 onto the start of lap 15 and uh, this was the first time where I, I had a little look so we gained a lot on the straight showed him my front nose on the brakes moved to the inside a little bit just to let him know that I was there um, but we wasn't quite close enough to get a run out of turn number one down towards turn two. You can see Ben there just in front and I was smelling it and a chance to get some points off my rival. So we have to get past Simon as fast as we can. And uh, this is when it happens. So we move on towards the end of lap 15. We get a very nice exit out of there. Simon, to be fair, gets a phenomenal exit on those hard tyres. And at this point, my mediums are starting to fade. So we need to make this count into turn one. I had a look. I thought about it, but someone kind of just wiggled a little bit to de de defend a little bit and indicate that he was going to cover the inside if necessary. But we get a great exit out of turn one here. Simon covers the inside. We're going to go all the way around the outside at turn number two. Can we make it stick? We're still there inside for the next corner. There's contact that we go sideways and we lose a bit of momentum. And Simon just stays in front for now. But that would have been a phenomenal overtake if we could have pulled it off as Arava tires once again from a squad sprint race but we're keeping the pressure on him i had a bit of a look into the chicane but it wasn't quite to be and uh, we're going to try again on the next lap so here we go okay, clear. drs open on the pit straight once again this to be fair summer's a bit further ahead this time as compared to last lap but we're still going to try and go for that move as we go very very late now on the brace we we Tried to have a look, but in the end, I thought, you know what, we're going to try and go for the same move as last time because it seems like Simon struggles for traction out of turn one. And this time, we've got a great run on him. We're going to go around the outside, and uh, Simon goes a bit wide. There is some understeer. We have contact, but I get the benefit of the contact there. And this time, we do get the move done around the outside. Simon, though, ends in turn up to a 1,000. He's going to try and go back down the inside, but he thinks better of it backs off and lets us have the position and now Ben is the next car up the road and he is two seconds in front so we are looking good here to try and hunt him down Simon Weigang though wasn't done yet of course any sports driver they're not going to give up and Simon having a look here we have to defend the inside of the turn one because you just never know what's going to happen and uh, Simon doesn't quite make the move but again he's right on our gearbox here and he's going to try and return the favour from the last lap there's a bit of a dummy going on. Simon kind of goes wide and then comes back inside. And I kind of read it. And we kept him behind beautifully there. A very nice kind of chess match in a way. And just kind of reading each other's moves. And we keep him behind. And now at this point on the last lap with one sector to go. The gap to Ben is 2.4 seconds. Now, unbeknownst to me, I didn't realise Ben had a three second time penalty. And then this happened. I just pushed the brakes too much, made a mistake, and it cost me some crucial, crucial time. Either way, into the final corner, um, again, I didn't know about the three-second time penalty, so I thought to myself, you know what, I'm happy, I'm buzzing. I beat some of Vigang on track, and I start weaving across the line, and the gap is 3.033. If I hadn't weaved across the line, I could have had that. And Ben, after that, on Discord, he ripped me to shreds about that, and, and uh, I can't blame him. It was a big, big mistake to make, but I didn't realize he had the time penalty if we'd realised we could have beat him today and we could have actually outscored Ben here today. So it is a real shame, but either way, the battle is going to roll on to the last race and we still have a chance mathematically going into the finale. But uh, guys, here are your final race results and Danny Berezhne is the Season 2 champion. He picks up the win and the fastest lap, so he wins here today. Hypers in second, James Baldwin P third, Ryan Littlemore, driver of the day, up in fourth place. Great driver from him ahead of Ben and myself. Summer Vigang P7, Storm in eighth, Thibaut Courtois finishes up in P9, scoring two points. And my teammate Raggy holds off for one point. So once again, my teammate Raggy in the points, which is great to see. And uh, yeah, pretty much this is uh, the top 10. I can't lie, I'm a little bit annoyed in hindsight that I didn't 
um, get Ben with that penalty, but that mistake cost me, and also that weaving across the line was it. That cost me 0 0.033 without a doubt, so it is what it is. And um, next time, we'll try to make that same mistake. And we now look at the second half of the table. We do have Hayden Gullis, P11, in the racing point. I believe he had a battle with Raggy, and my teammate Raggy managed to beat him in the end. We've got Alex Gillon, P12 for Red Bull, ahead of Niren in 13th. Isaac Gillison, P14, and his teammate Karki in 15th. So both Williams cars bringing up the rear. Arif and Eterno DNFing from the race here today. And Champolk Bassi, Tirolemulus, and Visa did not start the race, which does mean going into the finale, if we look at the driver standings, Danny now world champion world champion and he is now um, confirmed to be world champion so no one can beat him hypers p2 also confirmed and also uh james baldwin confirmed to be third place so the top three are locked in but when it comes to the battles elsewhere ben can still beat some of our gang and we still have a mathematical chance of beating ben the gap is 21 points but you never know it could happen if we win the finale and ben retires it's job done so um it could happen those two points that we missed out on today were key they were really really important because uh we could have made a big difference and it could have actually given us a chance going into the last race to really get ben either way we are actually ahead of chen bollock Bassi and james doherty now thanks to the result here today they both didn't turn up which means we gained enough points to actually get ahead of them in the drivers championship and we do have storm and alex gillon rounding up the top 10. elsewhere though at the bottom half of the table is my teammate raggy p11 and he's now put daylight between himself and hayden gullis which is great to see uh, Ryan little more with that fourth place finish goes from one point up to th up to 13 and jumps all the way up to p13 in the driver standings leapfrogging the three-way tie between eterno khaki and arab there on 10 points in the battle for 14th place then we have isaac gillison p17 niran 18 and Tibor courtois now p19 but still we've run a couple of races to his name he's got four points already which is great and you know really happy for him and visit at the bottom still with zero points to his name but that is your second half of the table in terms of the driver's championship and there are still plenty of battles going you know into the final race and things up for grabs and one of those battles is actually the constructors fight between mercedes and ferrari so me and raggy versus ben and arav and uh, it's going to be interesting because we'll jump into the constructors in a second but it's going to make things very very tasty because i think it could go down to the wire you can see on screen right now alfa romeo are constructors champions Haas second and Torosso in third. That battle is going to continue on to the last race, so that's still up for grabs. Renault are pretty much locked in in fourth place, and it's going to be a battle between Red Bull, Ferrari, and Mercedes for that fifth place. Having said that, it's going to be tasty. The six points between Ferrari and Mercedes, so you never know what could happen in the last race. As we've got Racing Point in eighth place, Williams P9, and McLaren rounding up the top ten here today. But uh, guys, that is going to be it from Squad Sprint here today in Hungary. The next race is the Hockenheim, and that is the finale, so do tune in for that one, guys. I really do recommend it. If you guys enjoyed this video and my recovery drive, then drop a like on the video. I'd greatly appreciate it. And also subscribe if you are new to the channel, guys, for daily Formula 1 content on the channel. Also, click the bell icon, guys, to be notified whenever I do post any new videos on the channel. And finally, check out the two videos on the screen if you have missed them. But that is it from me here today, and I'll see you all next time for the finale of Veloce Squad Sprint. But until then, let's go back from me.